In the breaks modules, we will begin with a brief overview, followed by the normal break, the alternate break, and brake temperature systems, and finally, non-normal operation. In part one, we will discuss the overview and the normal brake system. Let's begin with the overview. Carbon brakes are installed on all wing and body landing gear wheels. There are no brakes on the nose gear wheels. Carbon brakes provide substantial weight savings and improved braking ability. Separate normal and alternate brake systems are provided to operate the brakes. Normal brake system is powered from the number 4 hydraulic system. Normal metering valves and normal anti-skid valves control pressure to the brakes. The alternate brake system is powered from the number 1 or number 2 hydraulic system. Hydraulic pressure passes through automatic source select valves to alternate metering and alternate anti-skid valves. Parking brake lever is located on the control stand. The auto brakes selector is located on the captain's panel. A brake source light and a brake accumulator pressure indicator are located on the captain's panel. Let's now look at the normal brake system. We will discuss manual braking, the parking brake, the configuration warning, the anti-skid system, and the auto brakes system. Manual braking opens the normal metering valves. Hydraulic pressure is then supplied to the brakes through the normal anti-skid valves. The normal and alternate metering valves are linked together for simultaneous operation. Pulling the parking brake lever while pressing both brake pedals from either pilot's position sets the parking brakes. The ICAST memo message, Park Brake Set, is displayed. Setting the parking brakes closes the parking brake valve located in the brake return line and mechanically locks the brake pedals down. When the parking brake is set, pressing both brake pedals releases the parking brake lever and the parking brake valve opens. A normal brake accumulator is located in the normal brake system. The accumulator stores energy to set the parking brakes when normal and alternate brake systems are inoperative. A normal brake accumulator pressure indicator indicates hydraulic pressure in the accumulator. The ICAST warning configuration parking brake is displayed when throttles 2 or 3 are advanced for takeoff and the parking brake is set. Question. Answer B is correct. The normal brake system incorporates an anti-skid system for skid, locked wheel, hydroplane, and touchdown protection. The anti-skid system is automatic with no flight deck controls. Each main gear wheel has anti-skid protection when normal brakes are operative. The anti-skid controller receives inputs from the wheel speed sensors on each wheel. When brakes are applied, 
the controller monitors these inputs for a skid or locked wheel condition. When the controller detects a skid or a locked brake, the anti-skid controller commands the anti-skid valve to reduce brake pressure by releasing fluid to the system return line. Inertial reference system ground speed information is provided to the anti-skid controller for hydroplane and touchdown protection. For hydroplane and touchdown protection, if ground speed is greater than wheel speed, all brakes are released. Question. Answer B is correct. The ICAS warning message configuration parking brake is displayed when the brakes are set and throttles two or three are advanced for takeoff. The auto brakes system functions only during normal brake system operation. The auto brake system provides automatic braking after landing or during a rejected takeoff. The auto brake system is controlled by a rotary selector. Recall the auto brake selector is located on the captain's panel. Off position of the auto brake selector removes power and resets the auto brake system. Positions 1 through max auto are increasing pre-selected deceleration rates. The max auto position is slightly less than that produced by full manual braking. The auto brake system is armed by selecting a deceleration rate. The selector is held in place by a magnetic latch. After landing and all four thrust levers are retarded to idle, auto brakes regulate hydraulic pressure to the brakes and maintain the selected deceleration rate. Full anti-skid protection is provided. After landing, a new deceleration rate can be selected. Auto brakes provide braking to a complete stop. After landing, auto brakes disarm automatically when brakes are applied manually, any thrust lever is advanced, or if the speed brakes are stowed if deployed. The ICAS advisory message Auto brakes is displayed when the auto brake selector is in the disarm position. Placing the auto brake selector in RTO before takeoff arms the auto brake system. The selector is held in position by a magnetic latch. The RTO position can only be selected on the ground. Auto brakes are activated when wheel speed is greater than 85 knots and all throttles are retarded to idle. Maximum braking equivalent to full manual brakes is applied. Anti-skid protection is provided. During a rejected takeoff, Auto brakes are disabled automatically when full manual brakes are applied. Any thrust lever is advanced or the speed brakes are stowed if deployed. The auto brake selector remains in RTO.
Auto brake selector automatically trips off at liftoff. Question. Answer B is correct. Question. Answer A is correct.